Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1996. We're going to be taking a look at Styx and they're going to be performing Babe. So let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. My life. We've been married for 26 years. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here because this live performance of this track, the original track, the record, in order to get anywhere close to that live performance, you need such vocal ability, such instrumental ability, and sticks were like a band that were put together as a super band, but they weren't put together as a super band. Styx was full of guys that could not only play the guitar, play keys, and supply vocals at the same time, write songs. There was such a wide skill set fully throughout the band. And when you look down the list of band members and when they are all credited with vocals, you know that there is some serious talent going on. So in this setup, we've got five guys here that can all supply a vocal if you want it, and they've all got the ability to harmonize with each other. So you know that these guys can not only get in the studio and produce something that is top quality, but then when they hit the road and you watch them live, they've got the ability to reproduce exactly what's on the record, but in that live setting. And it's such a rare thing for a band to be able to do that 
that with the quality of songs and the quality of production that Styx tracks have. As you can probably tell from the dedication in the intro, this is a Dennis DeYoung track, and initially it wasn't even considered for the album in 1979, the Cornerstone album, and it was Tommy Shaw and JY James Young that convinced Dennis to put this on the album, and it turned into their first and only number one single in the US charts, and it also got to number six here in the UK. The dynamic in the intro, the way that we start with the keys and Dennis's vocal, as soon as his vocal comes in, it is just solid, the vibrato, the control that Dennis has vocally, but the way the track progresses, then getting into that classic progressive rock sound, but it's more pop rock. Some of the chords, the voicings that are in there, and the hooks, straight at the end of that chorus and just before the tagline of the chorus we get a really cool synthesizer hook which just really grabs your attention but then sets up that tagline. The other thing we have in this lineup is the overabundance of talent on guitar because we've got two great rhythm players but also lead players here and Tommy Shaw took the solo in this particular track and control, melody, you'll always find these things in Styx solo sections, but also J.Y. James Young, what a fantastic guitar player he is, but you have to add in to the mix the vocals and how great all of the band are here, but the guitar players are such great standalone vocalists, so it is a wealth of talent just across the board, and Styx tracks are so hard to cover live by any band because just getting guys together that are this talented is so rare. We have to give a mention as well to that rhythm section because with all top bands, they are rock solid live and they certainly are here. We have Chuck Panazzo and also Todd Suckerman on drums and Chuck plays bass. Unfortunately, his twin brother passed away this same year before this performance and that was John Panazzo. So that's why Todd is on drums and they keep it so solid throughout this whole performance. And this whole gig, I'm gonna put the link to this in the description below so you guys can check out the full concert because every single track is so solid, not only with the rhythm section, but just across the board, the whole band, the backing harmonies, the lead vocals, everything is so tight. Going back to when this all started, it was Chuck and his brother John who lived next door to Dennis and they'd get together and start a band. So it just happened. It was just a twist of fate that they lived next to each other. So this would have been when Chuck and John were age 12 and Dennis was 14. So 1961 in terms of the dates and it wouldn't be until 1970 that they then teamed up with Jay and in 1972 is when they signed their first record deal and they did four albums on that particular record deal. They had lots of fans in Chicago in terms of when they were playing live. As we can tell, they'd make a great sound, but they couldn't break in to that mainstream in terms of getting any mainstream exposure and starting to get known nationally rather than locally. And it wasn't until much later that they started to get radio airplay and that's with their track called Lady. And that started to do really well on the radio and it got to number six in the charts, but that was a full two years after the album that had it. And that was Styx 2 in 1970. So it had been on this album for a couple of years, but that particular track took a long time to get into the public's consciousness and also to get on the radio airwaves. Due to this popularity, they then signed with A&M Records and released the album Equinox in 1975. They had a track called Sweet Madam Blue that got a lot of radio airplay and they went on a national tour. And at this point, John quit the band just before they're about to go on tour just to spend time with his family because he didn't want to be away from them for 
as long as it takes to go and tour a whole country. So they brought in, at the last minute, Tommy Shaw. They released Crystal Ball in 1976, and then their massive breakthrough album, which was called The Grand Illusion, came along in 1977. That went three times platinum. But we're going to be getting back into the performance. We'll just watch it until the end, and then we'll get back into the analysis. have it. It's great to watch a band where every single member of that band is serving the song and some of the really subtle parts in there like Tommy and Jay, the way they might just add in a harmonic on the guitar and that's it. That's the only piece of a guitar that will be added to the keys especially in such a dynamic performance as this is. On those quiet sections, you just want it to be about the vocal and about the accompanying keys. You don't want somebody going off on one that is just totally out of place and you don't have that, fortunately, within this band. You get it in lots of other bands where, for some reason, the lead guitarist feels the need to solo all the time, regardless of the feel or where you are in a particular track, even if it's a ballad. But it's great to see top professionals who appreciate the music, but also the artistry within the music, being able to communicate that to an audience. Because getting the feel, getting the vibe of the track from that original record to live is such a difficult step to make. But the top bands can do it because they are also disciplined and they're all on the same page. They know exactly how much to put in but more importantly, how much to take out. That is such a massive part of getting great live performances is taking a lot of stuff out that you don't need so that you let those songs breathe. And that's something that an audience will always appreciate. The thing that set Sticks apart from every other band was the dream setup that they had live with the two guitars, drums, bass, and keys so they could get such a full sound, but also they could take the music in so many different directions with that setup. When you then add in the fact that they could all sing and had the ability to harmonize that's what blew every other band out of the water because in order to get five vocalists that could harmonize with each other and were so strong vocally in terms of their technique, their control, the stylizations within their vocals such as vibrato, trills, you had so much talent vocally as well as instrumentally, other bands would have to rely on getting in other singers, backing singers who would stand at the side of the stage. Another thing that is a major part of it is what I mentioned, the three ingredients of having great technical ability, putting on a show and being able to write a great song. And writing a hit is the hardest part of it because you can have some great bands with great technical ability, great singers, but they just can't write a hit. And sometimes they have to get other people to write songs for them in order to then really make an impact. 
on the charts. And Styx were a great example of a band that had great songwriters as well. They had such a wealth of talent. This is potentially one of the problems of having such talented songwriters in the same band is that, like I mentioned, this is one of Dennis's tracks and it wasn't going to be on an album. He just wrote it for his wife, but then they put it on Cornerstone. And having the direction that Dennis wanted to go in with his songwriting, maybe one or two of the other members of the band didn't want to go in that same direction. They wanted to take the music to another place. Just to fill in the timeline as well, in 1978, they released Pieces of Eight. And in 1979 is when Cornerstone was released. And like I said, huge album. It was nominated for a Grammy as well. And after that is when they came to log ahead in terms of the writing and the direction they wanted to go in because Dennis wanted to go in a more mainstream direction and Tommy and Jay wanted to get into that hard rock sound and continue along those lines. So this was when Dennis was first fired from the band, but then they smoothed things over. In 1981, they released Paradise Theatre, and that was a concept album. It got to number one in the charts, and it was their fourth consecutive platinum-selling album. And then Kilroy Was Here was released in 1983, and during the recording of that album, tensions started to arise between the band wanting to go in different directions, and by 19 1984, when they released their live album called Caught in the Act, the band had already gone their separate ways and Tommy Shaw had gone off to pursue his solo career as well. So from 1984 to 1989, Tommy did all of his solo stuff and Dennis did his solo stuff. It wasn't until 1990 that Styx started up again and this was without Tommy because he was playing with the Damn Yankees at that time. So Glenn Burtnick came in on guitar and they released an album in 1991 called Edge of the Century and that did well. The problem was that the whole grunge movement had started up and that was a major factor in Styx being dropped from the record label at that time. So in 1991 they disbanded. They then got back together in 1995 for their greatest hits release and in 96 is where they did their reunion tour which is what we're looking at here, Return to Paradise. And this was released as a live album the next year, 1997, and that was a surprise package because that was certified gold. So they released Brave New World in 1999 and this is where the artistic differences reared its head again in terms of the direction that they wanted to go in musically. So Dennis ended up leaving and another factor in that was that Dennis had a problem with his eyes due to light sensitivity so it meant that he couldn't go on tour he had to wait until his eyes got better so he asked the guys if they would wait for him before they went on tour but they didn't they just went on tour anyway so Dennis left at that point. Unfortunately in 2001 Dennis sued his former bandmates in order to be able to use the name of the band for his own performances and that would be things like formerly of sticks in terms of when he was described being a gig that he would be playing. So he managed to get the rights in order to do that, but it's just a shame that so many things come to suing in the music industry and suing former bandmates for the use of the band name. It's a really sad state of affairs, but I'm not gonna have time to cover everything to do with sticks and the history in this video, but just to bring things up to date in terms of the albums, we had Cyclorama in 2003, Big Bang Theory, was released in 2005 and then the most up-to-date album was The Mission released in 2017 but such a great live band as we can tell from this performance with Dennis in the mix such a great lead vocal but all of these guys have such great independent lead vocals so when you stick these guys together it's such a wealth of riches on lead guitars as well but thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one Rock.